Welcome to our new series, Minutes with the Minister. Each episode is a chance for us to meet with Bermuda's leaders and to learn about their new roles and to catch up on latest government initiatives and developments. For our first episode, I met up with Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable David Burt, to talk about the upcoming budget report. Now, I know he loves technology. So on the walk over to a nearby coffee spot, I asked him about his recent trip to the World Economic Forum in Davos. And more specifically, digital currency, Bitcoin, you know, the stuff that everybody seems to be talking about or asking about these days. Well, yeah, the blockchain. blockchain. That's all they're talking about, blockchain. Right. Because blockchain, you can go to a meeting without blockchain. Right. Blockchain's going to change everything. That was, that was, the, that was a, the biggest thing that you heard. But that was the reason why we went, actually. So it's really a thing. Not just well, yeah, I mean, but we only really went because um, of that. Right. Like, and so we know that we were doing things in the space. We know that we could be at the World Economic Forum. We were invited by certain people um, to attend. They set up meetings where they basically put us in touch with some of the biggest people in this space. Cool. Because it's very interesting. You can record up to multiple tiny decimals of value. Right. So, for instance, now the lowest unit of exchange we have is cent, right? Mm -hmm. But with a digital currency, not only do you have cents, you can have like, you know, one billionth of a cent. <laughs> and so one billionth of it just takes that down. But you can have smart contracts so you can literally map everything. Morning. Mm -hmm. you, Good morning. How are you, sir? Great. Good, thank you. I'll have a blockchain latte, please. Okay. Do you accept Bitcoin? <laughs> not yet. Yes. So after ordering coffee, sorry Bitcoin's not accepted, yet, it was time to get started on discussing the upcoming budget report. Free budget report. Yes. That you have prepared. I actually read this online. Um, I'm very happy that you actually put this out. Um, it's the first time in about five years. The second one that's ever been done. Correct. Which gives people the time to, you know, look at it, have their questions. And so as we were walking, a, a, a young lady walked up and asked you a question about page 12. Yes. And do you welcome feedback? I mean, I saw a comedian one day say that when he's asking his kids, he mm -hmm. said, what would you like, chicken, chicken? All right, steak it is. It's not that bad. I mean, we, we, it, consultation is important, right. because if you're implementing government policy, you want to make sure that you've considered all the possible eventualities. And so you'll find areas where people will say certain things where you may not have thought of um, and impact that a policy would have. But at the basis of it, um, I've taken to quoting Star Trek a lot, and it kind of dates me and ages me, but uh, when it comes to government policy, uh, I think of the, at the core of uh, the ethos of government is that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And from our perspective, we are looking at what are the policies that can best um, affect the greatest number of people to lead us to uh, long-term economic growth. Um, and so from that aspect, uh, we looked at it, and we certainly want to uh, continue with fiscal consolidation. But it's also recognized that if we're going to prepare our economy for growth, uh, we need to make sure that we make the investments that will yield that growth. Right. So that means investments in making sure that we diversify our economy, investments in making sure that <clears throat> we can be a more technological society, and that means investments in uh, technology inside of the government and making sure that we can have um, uh, a society that embraces and uses technology. And that's also investments in training, retraining, and education, which are critical in order for people to succeed um, in the future. If you want to diversify the economy, if you want to bring new jobs to Bermuda, if you want to bring jobs in new industries, then it doesn't benefit the people if we don't have people that are prepared to fill those jobs. So one of the things which you said overall is that we want to make sure that we increase those investments in education, increase those investments in training, and basically, as I said in my press conference, you know, this budget will focus on the forgotten, who by and large through the last um, six or seven years of austerity have not have been uh, forgotten. And when we talk about our current state, mm -hmm. with any budget, you know, rather it's your own budget, you all, you know, you're working, think about your budget, it's critical to make more than you spend. So ah. that, that's on one hand. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we are spending more than we're bringing in, which Correct. we're going to address by 2020. Yes. On the other hand, regardless of how much you make, mm -hmm. if you're spending more of that income on uh, paying off debt, so right now we're paying about 12 cents on every dollar that we make as mm -hmm. opposed to two cents say 10 years ago correct it just doesn't put you in an optimal state so on one hand balancing the budget on the other hand making sure that we 
bring the Ahmed Dad. Without question, that is very important. The problem of which Bermuda has had is that we haven't had economic growth. Right. And you're not able, if because I can give you a perfect example. After five years, Bermuda can, you know, stay on a path where we're not, you know, investing very heavily. You know, we want to focus on making sure we balance the budget and keep it forward. And we can have not a lot of growth. Or we can make investments which will yield economic growth, investments in diversification, investments in tourism, investments in making sure that we actually earn more money. Right. And we can see ourselves at the end of five years with three or four thousand new jobs as opposed to just one thousand on a regular term. Right. Anyone will accept the three or four. Everyone will say that that makes more sense to get to that in the long term. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that at that point in time, you will have more resources to enable you to pay off your debts. You have more resources insofar as making sure that your social programs are able to be supported. The pension programs are going to be supported. What we need more than anything is growth. And the government has to be a leader in making sure that we not only invest in that growth, but possibly change government policies that for a long time structurally have possibly not made Bermuda as competitive as we want to be, which will help us get that actual economic growth. Such as our tax system. Yeah. So I'm going to revise that, mm -hmm. revisit some of the ways that we tax, mm -hmm. broaden it a bit, and also to make the government more efficient on the flip side. Yes. Instead of cutting, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be the first approach to make sure the government is more efficient. I mean, you can't really cut so much in government now. Right. I mean, there's been a lot of cutting that has taken place, but cuts don't focus on the problem. If we want to grow, then we need to make government more efficient. Right. So that means we have to make the investments in technology in government. Um, I give an example recently about the fact that in 2018, you still can't pay your parking tickets online. I mean, there's different services that can be done in a far more effective manner using technology. But in order to get there, we have to make the investments. So we make the investments now, which will yield to reduce costs in the future. But those investments which we make now can provide jobs can provide opportunity, can provide training, and can do uh, things in a way that we haven't envisioned doing them before. So for instance, for me, I say, instead of uh, paying high-priced IT consultants, which my former life I was one, why don't we have uh, students at the Bermuda College who are engaged in uh, programming courses and learning about web development, why don't we have them actually building these programs for the government? It's a two-way street. They can get practical experience, and the government can actually get programs um, that can work and for benefit them. So one of the things of which we're looking at doing, we're talking about building a government Bermuda app, and I want to make sure the college is fully involved in the development of those things. Premier Brett, you have uh, obviously a lot that's in this report that's mm -hmm. exciting um, for our audience. So young people like you and I, uh -huh. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> Indeed. Everyone's young. Uh -huh. But what's exciting um, when it comes to this report that young people can look forward to and keep an eye on? Well, I think what's most important is that the government is looking to grow the economy, to diversify the economy, and to create more opportunities for young people who are growing up in Bermuda currently, or young people who may have left Bermuda and looking to come back. Uh, we want to have more jobs. We want to have different types of jobs. And the government's going to do what's required to uh, have that investment to create those jobs. In addition, for those persons who are looking to retool uh, to upgrade their skills, we're going to make sure that we put the investments into training and to upskilling persons in so we can actually have, when we deliver new jobs in technology, when we deliver new jobs in renewable energy, when we deliver new jobs in different places, that we can have the Bermudians that are going to be skilled in order to fill those jobs. So I think that's the focus. We want to make sure we have growth. We're going to have inclusive growth. We're going to have policies that are going to make sure that we build and create wealth for our young people. And we want to make sure that the people feel a part of that. And so that's, I think, the overall ethos of the government, taking care of those people who may have been forgotten. All right. Well, Premier Brad, I appreciate you taking a couple of time uh, out to talk about everything that's in here. Um, welcome back to Bermuda. You've Thank been you. traveling and Indeed. you're very busy and you're going to be on the road, um, mm -hmm. you know, engaging with the um, community about what's coming up with the uh, budget report in March. Yes. So to our audience, feel free to comment. Um, ask questions, engage, and get excited because you know something like this not only affects us um, here in 2018, but for future uh, generations to come. Absolutely, and any comments or questions can be emailed to openbudget at gov.bm. All right, thanks a lot. No problem. Much appreciated, my friend. Coffee was good too, you know. Excellent.